Hello everyone and welcome to the fifth video on PCG in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, I will be talking about splines. Splines are a very good way to spawn meshes along a curve. This might be very interesting if you want to have a fence, for example. This can also work to spawn walls, for example. Pretty much anything that is along a line or along a curve. To focus on the topic, I've hidden everything else from the previous videos. So here I'm moving the input from the PCG graph a bit above everything else so we can focus on that. Now I'm going to create a new node and look for the spline sampler. So to provide data here, we're going to look for a different node called spline data. And then I'm going to connect the two together. So as you can see in the scene, nothing is happening. This is because we don't really have a spline yet. So we just need to create one. And this is fairly simple. Just create a new blueprint, choose a actor class, then inside your blueprint, look for spline and add one. You would be able to see one line here in your blueprint and that's it. That's all you need to do. Back into your PCG graph, in the spline data node, you can see the settings that you have a category called actor filter. In here, I want to replace self by all world actors. Once you've done that, you're going to see a warning in your spline data. The reason for this warning is that you don't really have any spline data yet. So what we need to do here is actually connect the blueprint into the spline data node. To do that, go back into the blueprint we just created Click on the very top component of the blueprint, which in this case is the PP Spline Tutorial Self. This will give you the details of the blueprint. You can see those details on the right side, and you also can see a search bar. In here, look for tag. What we want to do here is create a new tag for this blueprint. So add one element to the array of tags and name it. In my case, I'm going to name this tag Spline Tutorial, and I'm going to copy this new string. A very important thing to know here is that we're looking, once again, to the very top component of the blueprint, here, the actor. As you can see here, the word actor, and then you have the array of tag. This is important because if you're looking into one of the components of the blueprint, for example, the actual spline, and if you were clicking on spline and looking for a tag, you also would be able to see an array of tags. However, those will be component tags. Here what we want is an actor tag. So now. You can come back to the PCG graph and you can see in the actor selection that we're selecting an actor by tag and for the name of the actor selection tag we can copy and paste the name of the tag we attributed to the blueprint. Then from the out you can create a new node, a static mesh spawner as we saw in the previous videos. In this case I will use a mesh from Quixel Bridge once again. What I'm looking for is a modular metal guard rail. And if you look into the scene, well, there's nothing yet. And the warning from the PCG graph is still here. Fixing this is actually very simple. You just need to drag and drop the blueprint for the spline that we created into the scene. As soon as you do that, you'll be able to see the mesh that we just selected. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to hide the mesh spawning for a second and just focus on the spline itself. So far, your spline is very small, but you can make it bigger by clicking on one of the points, pressing Alt and then dragging to a new spot. This will duplicate one of the spline points. You can move the different points in the spline as you want. You can also rotate the different points. Now I can connect back the static mesh spawner. We can see that it's a bit of a mess. This is because I showed you the spline data in itself, but I think, in most cases, it's better to work directly with the mesh that you want to spawn. This way you can see what's happening with your spline directly. I can simply modify the different points in the spline to have something a bit more realistic and better looking. In my case, I think deleting some of the points I created will work a bit better. Finally, before the end of the video, I want to show you another thing with the PCG graph and splines that make it way easier to work around landscapes. Here, my landscape is pretty flat. 
but sometimes it's not the case. So if I change and sculpt the landscape here to make it a bit bigger, you can see that our spline is actually absorbed into the terrain here. To fix this, you could manually move the BP spline in your scene, but this will not really solve your issue. See, if my spline is bigger, here you can see that where it's flat, well, the mesh is working correctly. However, if I move everything, then it works better on the hill, but not on the flat surface. PCG Graph allows you to fix this problem very simply. You can go back to the PCG Graph and look for the projection node. You can connect the out of the spline sampler into the in of the projection. Then you can connect the landscape section of the input node into the projection target. Now if we go back into the scene, we can see that our spline is actually fitting on the terrain. It was on the hill, but also on the flat terrain. Now once again, kind of need to tweak around the spline to make it look better. And in some cases, I might want to slightly modify the projection. If I go into the projection node and uncheck the project rotations, then this might work better for what my mesh is going to look like. In here, I don't really have a lot of curve going on. But in some situations, you might have a bit of a curve where the rotation is not going to really fit the terrain anymore. If you uncheck project rotation, then this might fix your issue. There's actually a very good tutorial by UNF Games on this topic, and you can find the video in the description. So this is it for this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!